I'm Lenny Riyashi and we're here from the observation point of the Rubicon Trail. Today we're going to be testing the Wrangler Rubicon. Hi Lynn. Hello. Good to see you and uh, we've been having quite a blast here. You got a little glimpse of that on the program last week and so we're going to now bring you all the details. Lynn is here from Lebanon and uh, it's a TV show in Lebanon that exactly. you're putting together as well. Yes. Tell me a little bit about it. It's called Auto Liban and we're just now shooting, preparing for it. It's going to be aired very soon. All right. So. Yeah. They're doing what we do for you in the Indian market. And so uh, we've been on this trail together now for well almost 24 hours. It's been really exciting. The vehicle behind us is really capable. We're going to bring you all the details on the Wrangler and of course on the trail. Let's get started. It's hallowed ground. The 22-mile-long Rubicon Trail goes back over 120 years and has long been considered one of the world's toughest trails to drive through. Now, this is just 11 miles that we're going to do today, and uh, that's just a small portion of the Rubicon Trail. And I've been told that even just this 11 miles could take us the better part of the day. Yes, we were warned, and yet we went forth. My steed on this ride, this silver hardtop four-door Jeep Wrangler. The cars being used by our entire group are all special 10th anniversary limited editions of the Rubicon variant of the Wrangler family. The Wrangler was first launched in 1986 and it is a direct descendant of the very first Willys Jeep. The current Wrangler is the third generation. The Rubicon variant is named after this very trail and was launched as a special off-roading model in 2003. And so it is celebrating its 10th anniversary, as I mentioned. The trail began as pretty tame, with dust being the only real indicator of any off-roading as I followed the vehicle in front of me into the forest. But soon the climb began. Some puddles, some slush and mud followed. But for the most part, this seemed very much just a bad kacha road. And then came the rocks. Thank God we'd already switched to four-wheel drive mode. Nothing, no description, no briefing could have prepared me for what I saw before me. Now it seems just a little strange. Are they really going to let us take their shiny new Jeeps over this kind of terrain? Well, of course they are. That's why we are here, right? The Jeep Wrangler family is powered by a 285bhp 3.6 litre Pentastar V6 engine and you have the choice of a 5-speed automatic or 6-speed manual gearbox. I have the automatic with me on the trail today. I've taken it out of the auto setting or D and put it into Tiptronic so I can keep it going in second gear for extra traction and control and first gear when required. After some crazy driving and even crazier terrain, we finally got to the observation point on top. Breathtaking views of the Granite Bowl Valley below and also some nourishment. Much needed at that. So it's a bit of a halfway point that we are at and uh, some pretty crazy stuff, right? A little bit of a rock crawl, some mud and slush to go through and uh, the vehicles have performed admirably well. You know what, I thought that we got to see a good side to the Wrangler in terms of its performance capability and of course its off-roading skills. But what they tell me is what we've been through is nothing. What lies ahead is far scarier. Let's get on with it. Luckily for me, I don't have to either switch cars or share the driving, which means I get to carry on. Yay! 
Now, we were descending into the valley next. And I'm thinking, how bad can it really be? Now, they're just trying to scare us, right? Oh boy. This one's gonna be a tough one. Or is it? That was pretty incredible, I have to say. Uh, I thought I'm going to scrape some rocks, maybe the underside of the car. Neither happened. Oh boy, look at that. And on it went like that. The Wrangler's taking to pretty much anything coming my way. The part-time rock track four-wheel drive system from Jeep is effective. Now, right through this drive, the one thing that's really sort of stood out for me is uh, not just the four-wheel drive system, but also the kind of wheel and axle articulation that this vehicle demonstrates. It's pretty impressive. The Wrangler's Dana 44 axles have locating arms as well as stabilizer bars. There is a front steering damper and high pressure gas charge shockers. And as you must have guessed, the suspension is set to off-road rather than on-road specification on the Rubicon variant. Now the suspension has been taking quite a lot of beating and uh, they did promise that it's gonna get much worse post our little halt for lunch. And you know what? It has. It's been uh, pretty crazy. There's been sections I've looked at and thought, there's no way we're going to go through that. What has also helped is the fact that we're using these special tires that have been uh, designed in a sense specifically for this purpose. They're called mud terrain tires, but uh, I'll tell you what, they may as well have been called rock crawl tires as well because they're doing the job. Having said that, mud terrain tires basically have a very large tread pattern to offer the tyre more flexibility on a hard, compacted surface and more bite for slushy terrain. Well, it's certainly helping, I can tell ya. The sharp downward slopes are now starting to give way to muddy, dusty forest floor, more dense trees too. Well, I'm pretty much covered in dust and uh, you know what? We started this morning on the trail at about oh, 11 o'clock it's been about six and a half hours, and you'd think that we'd have covered a fair amount of ground, right? Just about seven and a half miles. That's about all that we've managed to do. We've got a few more to do still before we reach our campsite. You know what? I can keep going. But I don't have to. We're at our campsite, meager to some, surprisingly luxurious to others. I'm just glad I'm getting my own tent. Tired and hungry, after a quick shower, I'm headed to dinner and the bonfire.
first of our second screen questions this week comes from Pandu. He asked about buying either an Audi A4 or a BMW 3 Series, both diesel variants. Which car is better, he asks. Well, both cars, Pandu, have attributes that may or may not work for you. If you're looking more for a package that brings you lots of features and gadgets and want good looks, the Audi A4 is the way to go. But the overall winner in terms of performance, features and ride quality, the car to beat right now is the BMW 3 Series. Our next question comes from Neil. The question is, when do we expect the new Honda Jazz in India? And will it be diesel and automatic? Neil, the answer to your question quite simply is yes, there will be a diesel. There will also be an automatic. The launch of that new Honda Jazz will happen in the first quarter of the new year. And we do expect all the variants at the time of launch. Up at the crack of dawn and it's a quick turnaround to get going again. I'm back in my four-wheel, four-door silver Wrangler Rubicon, eager to conquer even bigger boulders, climb steeper slopes and basically make a splash. Through the forest floor and once again the climb begins. And it's like we're somehow new at this despite all of yesterday's learnings. Scary. Well, you know what they say, it's always difficult getting to the top. Now, after yesterday, we were pretty confident that we knew what we were doing. You know, we thought, all right, this is gonna be fairly easy now, but you know what, going back up this slope, has been pretty hairy and uh, in fact the Wrangler in front of me is uh, kind of stuck, it's stranded, run aground if you will and so every now and then you get reminded this isn't so easy, it's just the car that makes it look like it's easy and so you've got to keep applying yourself, you've got to keep uh, ensuring that uh, you don't do that one little thing that's wrong and of course uh, the part that is helping is that now on the way back up this slope we've got the rear and front diffs locked. The front and rear electronic locking differentials basically ensure that power is distributed evenly between the four wheels for the best possible traction at any time. This happens at the flick of a switch and helps especially when one wheel is off the ground. The car also has another switch that lets you disengage the front sway bar. This gives the wheels an extra 22% of individual articulation which is impressive and a total boon on the rocks. And slowly but surely, with morning most definitely turning to noon, we've made it back up to the observation point on top. Whew. A good opportunity and a great backdrop to let me show you the Wrangler in some greater detail. Now this is as rugged as it gets. The uh, styling on this Wrangler is a little bit more intense, a little more extreme than the regular Wrangler, if you want to call it that. There are plenty of variants and we're not sure still which one is going to make it to the Indian market. I have my doubts about the Rubicon, quite frankly, because this is really meant for intense off-roading. Not too much demand for that in India. What I can tell you is that there's a very neat steel bumper up front. It has detachable sides and uh, why that helps is because you get a whole lot more in terms of maneuverability through the kind of tough uh, terrain we've come through. You also get a chance to quickly take a glimpse at the suspension. Really tough, really solid stuff. And uh, no doubt about it, also has been a big help for us as we've come through all of this uh, really crazy uh, kind of driving. And one last thing I want to point out are these uh, rock rails along the side. You've seen roof rails, but we've got rock rails. They help protect the body because you really don't want to dent that. You don't want the door not to open. You don't want to get stuck inside. So uh, some pretty neat styling cues, also very functional. And uh, we had a chance to actually catch up with the chief designer at Jeep we get a little bit more perspective on not just the Wrangler, but the Rubicon as well. Joining us right now, we've got the uh, Chief of Exterior Design at Jeep, Brian Nylander. Good to see you, Brian. It's nice to be here, thank you. It's great to be here, I can tell you. I mean, what, a, what, a, what an absolutely incredible ride this has been. And uh, of course, this has been at the center of it, the, uh, the Wrangler Rubicon. Give me a sense of what it means to you to, uh, you know, on the one hand, hang on to the legacy of the Wrangler when you look at future design. And on the other hand, uh, trying to say that, all right, this is a modern contemporary vehicle. Yeah, um, 
it's a special project for a designer. And I think uh, you know us, myself, and the other guys in the studio. We're pretty honored to be able to work on it. Um, I typically like to think of ourselves as curators. You know, it's such an icon. It's it's really up to us to really preserve what it is mm -hmm. and you know continue that, modernize it, um, you know, and, and just bring it into the future. Um, you know, there's some things on the car that will just will never change. Um, you know, we've talked before about this on the trail. You look at the seven slot grill. It really, that's religion for us. You know, you'll never see an eight or a nine slot Jeep. <laughs> at least I don't think so. Um, the trapezoidal wheel flares, you know, that's something that's distinctly Jeep. Uh, the round headlamps, you know, all those things, those really come together and make the face of, of what uh, the Wrangler is. So, you know, you can see this car a half mile down the road and you'll know instantly what the thing is. So You'll know it's a Jeep. Absolutely. So so that part then, I mean, some of those things that you mentioned, it's safe to assume that they're not going to go away. They're not going to change because... Uh, you, you know, unlike some other brands, that really is a very distinct identity. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. You know, there for a while we went to, to square headlamps on the Wrangler and we, we quickly dropped that and went back to the rounds. Uh, that's something you're always going to see. It's just such a distinct Jeep Q. Um, but, you know, we walk a fine line. It's, you know, you want to modernize the car, um, but you also want to, you know, keep it true to its roots. You know, everyone knows what a Wrangler is. You go around the world, you know, and sure. anything that's an off-road vehicle, they know it as a Jeep, you know, so... Um, it's really, uh, like I said, it's it's a privilege for us, and uh, it's it's a pretty unique situation for a designer to to work on a vehicle like this. Very few other cars like it. Now tell me about the Rubicon. Uh, how have you uh, gone about making this visually a little bit different from the regular Wrangler? Yeah. So um, this one's the Rubicon tent. Um, below this is even uh, more special. Even that more that special. makes it more special. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Yeah. The uh, the standard Rubicon, obviously, it's the wheels and tires from a visual standpoint yeah. on that car. Um, it's got its own unique wheel on there. It's got its own tire. So that really sets it apart. There's a few other pieces on the car as well, the rock rail on the side of it. Mm. Um, you know, but the Rubicon tent, though, this one is, uh, this one's the special one for us, you know. Uh, had to do something special for the 10th anniversary. Um, wanted to make sure that it really stood out from the standard Rubicon, too. So we did a, a new, unique vented hood, something we haven't done before. That is new, yeah. Yeah, so these actually, they're, they're vented to the underside to extract heat. Um, so it's functional, it's not just it's a design kit. Absolutely, yeah. Right. It had to be functional. It's, that's one thing we don't want to do on a Wrangler is just do decorative stuff, you know, just to, just to do it. So everything on here is very functional. Um, we did the new bumper. This is an all-steel bumper uh, for this model. Um, this thing, uh, you know, for the designers that worked on it, this was like a vehicle in and of itself here. It's such problem solving that goes into it, you know. Um, they're missing right now, but it's actually got end caps that go right here. And uh, you can take these bolts off, pull those, they're steel end caps pull those things off and it just gives you added clearance to the uh, to the tire there which has helped us right now uh, exactly, on the trail yeah. but so otherwise on, on a on a regular basis you have like a full bumper if you want to exactly all right yeah so you get the red uh, the red accented tow hooks um, you know that's uh, we've played up the red accents on this car as well so yeah. it's not something you see on the standard Rubicon um, the red is on the Rubicon font yeah we've got it on the trail rated badge on the other side um, you know then there's some red on the interior as well Yes. Um, this one, it also comes winch ready, so you can pull this plate off here. You can just unbolt these, pull that off. Here's your plate cover for the front, so you can put the winch in there. And uh, yeah, it's just uh, it's something we're really proud of. We're excited that we got it on here. So it's uh, it's been a fun experience. Now, it was only with this generation that the Wrangler got the long wheelbase four-door version. I suspect that's the one more relevant to our market too, since as a direct import, the Wrangler will be in the 20 lakh plus bracket. But I have to say though, that the two-door soft top looks very sexy. And yes, before any of you can ask, the answer is yes, an emphatic yes. This is what the Mahindra Thar should be. You know what, Lynn? Yeah. I have to ask you a quick question. Wasn't that just a lot of fun? Very much. It was awesome. And uh, you know what? I, I've seen this lady. She was in the Rubicon just ahead of me, <laughs> getting through some pretty tough obstacles as well. So, you know, who says that girls can't off-road? You did a good job. Thank you so much. <laughs> great job and great fun too. Thank you. And with that, we are making our way out of the wilderness and back to reality. What an exhilarating and rejuvenating 24 hours it's been. The Rubicon Trail has been used by Jeep engineers for decades to help test and improve their vehicles. And I have to say, that's got to be one great proving ground. This has been quite an experience for us, 
we will have more details on the Jeep variants coming to the Indian market as clarity emerges on that front. Until next week, please wear your seatbelts and join us on CNB.